Hi everyone. Today we're gonna see how radius authentication works on the Polo Alto. To do so, we are going to configure radius server profile and then we're gonna call it under authentication profiles. And then we will see how users can access firewalls who are member of the Active Directory groups. And then you can restrict access whether you want to give them full admin access or you want to give them read only access. So to start off with the configuration, you log on to the firewall and then you go on the device tab. Here you see multiple options under server profile. So we're gonna configure radius profile. You click on it and click on add. You give it a name. So I'm gonna give it just radius profile. Now you see default timers where how how soon it declares that the radius server is not reachable. So the timeouts is three seconds and the retries are three. So after every three seconds, it's gonna try and it's gonna try three times before declaring it unreachable. And the authentication protocol. So in my example, I'm using PAP, but you can choose what protocol you're using, but make sure on both ends, the protocol is common. So I've configured PAP here, but on our radius server, I'll show you where we'll configure the same protocol for the authentication. In the server, now you just need a server detail. So I'm gonna click add, it's a user-friendly name. I've given it AD. It's asking for the IP address of the server, which is this, and the secret key. So this is the key which needs to be configured on both ends and it has to be common so that this radius client can connect to the radius server and that radius server authenticates using this radius key. I'm using default port for the authentication so nothing special there. Click OK, our radius profile is ready. Next, we are going to configure radius authentication profile. To make authentication profile work, you click on add and you make radius auth profile. In the type, it asks you what type of authentication you wanna do. I'm saying I'm gonna do radius. And in the server profile, do you have a server profile for it? Yes. But in case if you have not uh, configured any server profile and you straight away landed here, it gives you the option to do a quick server profile configuration and then you configure it and click out on OK. It will automatically attach it here and creates the profile for you. So in our case, we did it in advance. So here it is. You wanna, you want this firewall to fetch the user group from radius? Yes, I would like to do so. What is the user domain? So in my case, it's lab.internal. And what type of user modifier you want? So when user log on, what username, what in which format the user should put in the username? So you have three options, user input, or you have user domain, user input, or user input domain. But in my case, I'm saying none, so I'm gonna take the raw data, whatever user is, in whichever format the user puts in the credentials, I'm gonna accept it. Next, you have multi-factor. No, we are not doing any multi-factor, so I'm gonna skip it. And last, it, it asks you for the allow list, so who can access this firewall through this radius profile. So I'm going to say all, but you see it now fetches the Active Directory groups that I've created on my in my Active Directory. So, but now I'm saying all, but I'm going to restrict it from our radius side. So let's say, okay, the last step, which is pending on the firewall to make this radius authentication work is to attach this authentication profile under the management authentication settings so that whenever someone tries to log on, that authentication profile gets invoked and the authentication process takes place. So you go under the setup setting, then go under the management tab. You go under the authentication setting pane and click on settings. Now here it, it is asking you to attach the authentication profile. So that's the radius auth profile that we created. And this, uh, setting is only supported for radius tactics and SAML. So LDAP is not supported via this method, but there's a separate method for LDAP to get authenticated. Click OK, and we are all done on the firewall side. So this takes effect, and now firewall is configured to have radius authentication. So you cannot log on unless you are coming through the radius authentication. 
now to configure the radius server and how radius policy needs to be configured i'm going to take you to the radius server so i'm going to pause the video and come back all right so this is the server windows 2016 i have installed active directory role on this and the network policy server role so if i go under tools and go down you see the network policy server so you can add roles and features uh, on this and then you can enable the network policy server role it is easy to configure uh, just few steps to do you can get them on google that's quite straightforward so when you configure this network policy server uh, you first do the right click on the nps and you see the option of register server in active directory so my active directory and npm are running on the same server but if in your case it's on a different server you can just click on this and it asks you for the information so i already did it so that's why it's grayed out next you need to configure policies how you want to allow access so in my case i'm going to configure a network policy where i want to restrict access to the firewall so i'm going to name it firewall access I'm going to type of network access server. I'm going to leave it default. Moving on. Now, here I'm going to define the conditions on which conditions the user will be accessing the firewall. So, if I say add and Windows group, now here I'm going to restrict access just to IT group. And that's how I restrict it. I click on add again. It, uh, going down, it's going to ask me for the authentication type. So remember on the firewall we configured PAP, so that's what we're gonna choose here. And the last thing is I'm gonna be client IP address where the request will come from. If you see on the radius client property, it's asked for the client IPv4 address. So I'm gonna say 10.2.0.1. So this address will always be the management IP address of the firewall. So always remember that. Okay, that's done. Click next. I'm going to give access granted. Next, I'm not doing any less secure, but just PAP. Nope, I don't want to read any notifications. So I'm going to leave these configurations and straight default. The last thing I want to configure is, or you would like to configure, is the vendor specific attribute because when firewall and a query for radius authentication is coming through a vendor specific ID. So for firewall, uh, like Palo Alto, it is the vendor number is 25461. So we're gonna do that, the vendor specific, click on add. It asks for the specific list or you add a vendor code. So for me, I'm gonna add a vendor code. And yes, specify whether the attribute conforms to the radius RFC. Yes, it does. Configure the attribute. So this is the important stage, right? now if you want to give access to you administrators to the firewalls then you want to configure here either number one or number two because one and two gives access to the firewalls and three and four number give access to panorama so if you want to give access to panorama or you want to give access to firewall that totally depends on you but you need to get two separate tools for that so i'm going to show you how so in this case i'm going to give this one to firewall so I'm gonna give number one, and then under attribute format, it's gonna be string, and I'm I wanna give access super user. Super user means it's gonna it, the accounts under user uh, group IT they can access complete firewall features. They can make changes. They can do anything. I'm saying okay, okay. So I have an attribute now here with super user, right? Now let's do it again. You can add as much as you want to 5461. Yes. And now I'm going to say, for example, just to show, I'm going to say three, which is for panorama. I'm going to use string and I'm going to choose for user. All right. So that's done. This is good. I'm going to close. And now you see that you see two use super user values because you created two attributes there. So when you hit next, it gives you the overview of what we have done. We hit finish and your policy is quite at the bottom. So it's like an access list. It's gonna check top to bottom. So your policy will never be matching because you have a deny policy. 
So to make it work, you just right click and move up, and then one more right click and move up. So your policy gets matched first. Last thing, you go under radius clients and server. So this is where you tell who will be coming in to ask for the authentication uh, process. So I already had an entry, but you click on this and click on new. So when you do this, this window will appear. And I gave it a name lab firewall. And here again, I gave the firewalls management interface IP address. Always remember this will be the management interface IP address because for any authentication purpose request or any log forwarding request or any DNS or NTP request management plane is used. And the only interface is used for these requests is a management interface. So this is done. You have an option of verify. You can click on verify. You can resolve it. Okay. Right. And then you go under the shared secret key. So in my uh, case, we are using normal manual secret key. And remember, we configured secret key on the firewall. So that same secret key needs to be configured here. And that's done. You click on OK and it's enabled. Now, this is done. After this, our authentication should work. Users under group IT should now be able to access the firewall. But who is under group IT? So let's quickly check. We go under Active Directory users. We are under the group. We are under the lab.internal domain. We are under the group security. And if you see under IT, I have a member called Rob. And his username is R Rob, right? So let's go back to the firewall quickly. All right, so we are on the firewall. Now we are going to log out from the firewall. And I'm going to log in through Rob account. And it worked which means the configuration that we did together is good. Now to see what profiles have been matched for this user. So you go under monitor tab and system logs and you see that it says when authenticated using our ROP, it, it's used a less secure authentication method. That's okay, that's PAP. And it's used the profile radius auth profile and the, very, the log next to it is saying, that this user is authenticated using this uh, radius auth profile and the radius auth profile with this and the server address. So we successfully did our authentication through radius. And let me show you on a CLI how it looks like uh, from the logs perspective if you're troubleshooting anything. So if you're troubleshooting, you go under the CLI of the firewall and you type less mp hyphen log space auth d logs now if you see this file contains all the authentication logs for the users but trying to log on so you search for our rob here you go so you can scroll down and up so in this case it says trying to authenticate the user r rob it says the admin user through web or Rob. And then it says got authentication profile. So it found the profile for Rob. Very good. It says the auth profile radius, the VSYS, is not auth sequence. So like I said, when you do not give any sequence or when you do not enter what the user format the user logon format should be. It just takes the default format. So it, it clearly says here, keep original username that is whatever end user type. It's our Rob in the request, right? So it's gonna go further. It's gonna check the authenticating user with profile radius or profile. It, it converted my username under the, with attaching the domain to it. And it says the authentication type is PAP. It opened the socket there, very good. It connected to the server on the default port 1812. It goes the that access accept, so that uh, user got accepted and it got the admin role. What is the role? So it says it's super user. So this is what we configured there. 
So that's how we get confirmation or that the rights are given to the user according to the profile that we created. So got response for user lab are Rob. The auth status says it is success and it is able to access the firewall and now it has all the access that is needed and that's done this is where you can come in and do the troubleshooting so this is quite handy if your authentication is failing and where it is failing so this this command and under these uh this file you can come and check and that's all about how radius works on follow alto i hope this video is helpful and you get to learn about it if you have any questions please leave comments or if you want to know more about any other topic please let me know and i'll try my best to do so thank you and have a nice day